Act 4, Scene 5, the final scene in Act 4, takes place in Juliet's room. The nurse comes in and says, Mistress, what? Mistress, Juliet. Fast, I warrant her, she. Why, lamb, why, lady, fie, you slug a bed. Why, love, I say, madam, sweetheart, why, bride, what? Not a word? You take your pennyworths now, sleep for a week for the next night, I warrant the county Paris has set up his rest, that you should rest but little. God forgive me. Marry and amen, how sound is she asleep? I must need wake her. Madam, madam, I let the county take you in your bed. So this is a long, elongated, dramatic scene where the nurse thinks Juliet is asleep. Which I guess she is, but of course she's supposed to be appearing dead. I says, come on, get up, get up, you lazy bones. And come on, you need to get up. Paris is here and I'm sure he has slept in such a way that he's going to take out all his energy tonight in uh, the marriage bed with you. I should go and get Paris and let him in your bed. That would wake you up. And then uh, she opens the curtains and realises Juliet is wearing her clothes and says, what, dressed and in your clothes and down again? So what, you got dressed and then went back to bed? I must need to wake you. Lady, lady, lady. And she's trying to wake her up. And then finally the penny drops. Alas, alas, help, help, my lady's dead. Oh, well a day that ever I was born. So aqua vitae, ho, my lord, my lady. So, oh no, oh no, oh no, Juliet's dead. Oh, curse the day I was ever born. Get me a drink. Lord and Lady Capulet. In comes Lady Capulet. What noise is here? Who oh, lamentable day, a oh, terrible day. What is the matter, asks Lady Capulet. And the nurse says, look, look, oh heavy day. Lady Capulet says, oh me, oh me, my child, my only life. Revive, look up, or I will die with thee. Help, help, call help. So basically, you know, my child, Juliet, my reason for living, wake up or I will die with you. And Capulet comes in hearing all this noise and says, for shame, bring Juliet forth, her Lord is come. So in other words, bring Juliet here, her husband's arrived. And the nurse says, she's dead, deceased, she's dead, alack the day. So she's dead, curse this day. Lady Capulet says, alack the day, she's dead, she's dead, curse this day, she's dead. Capulet says, ha, let me see her, out, alas, she's cold, her blood is settled, her joints are stiff, life and these lips long separated, death lies on her like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower of all the field. So Capulet wants to see her, and he sees that um, she, you know, her blood has stopped pumping, her joints are stiff, basically she's dead. And he's saying death lies on her like frost out of season. So you know, this is the wrong time for her to die. She's, she's not old. Uh, it's like frost on the sweetest flower in the field. The nurse says, oh, lamentable day. You know, what an awful day. And La Lady Capulet says, oh, woeful time, terrible time. And Capulet says, death that hath taken her hence to make me wail. So death has taken her and it makes me cry. Uh, Ties up my tongue, will not let me speak. So... You know, I'm, I'm tongue-tied because I'm so grief-stricken I can't say anything. And then along comes Friar Lawrence with Paris and the musicians. And Friar Lawrence, playing the part, says, Come, is the bride ready to go to church? Capulet says, Ready to go, but never to return. O son, the night before the wedding day hath death lain with thy wife. There she lies, flower as she was, deflowered by him. Death is my son-in-law, death is my heir. My daughter he hath wedded, I will die and leave him all. Life, living, all is death's. So this long speech is basically saying, you know what? Yes, Juliet's ready to go to church, but not for a wedding, for a funeral. Oh, Paris, the night before your wedding, death has taken Juliet. She'd been deflowered by death. Death is now my son-in-law. Juliet has married him and leave him everything I have. I will die and leave death everything I have. Everything belongs to death now. Now, I analysed this scene in detail in my ebook. You can buy it for £1.99, following the link in the description. Very clever wordplay and imagery linked to death here, which um, an Elizabethan audience would have understood, but today's audience won't without um, a bit of analysis. And then Paris says, Have I thought long to see this morning's faith, and doth it give me such a sight? So basically, you know, I've waited really long for this moment, and it's, this is what happens. Such a sight as this. Lady Capulet says, A cursed, unhappy, wretched, hateful day, most miserable hour that ever time saw, in lasting labour of his pilgrimage, but one poor one, one poor and loving child, but one thing to rejoice and solace in, and cruel death hath catched it from my sight. 
So she's saying, what an awful day, the most miserable hour that ever was. In all of time, I had just one loving child and one thing to be happy about, and death has taken it from me. And the nurse, and that obviously that's the first time Lady Capulet said anything that seems to suggest she cares about Juliet, but a little too late. Oh, woe, a woeful, woeful day, most lamentable day, most woeful day that ever, ever I did yet behold. Oh, day, oh, day, oh, day, oh, hateful day. Never was seen so black a day as this, a woeful day, a woeful day. Lots of repetition for effect. Basically, you know, what a sad day. It's an awful day. Worst day I've ever had. This is the, the worst thing ever. Paris has beguiled, divorced, wronged, spited, slain. So Juliet was tricked, wronged, and divorced, and killed. Most detestable death. He hates death. By the beguiled, you know, death, you tricked Juliet. By cruel... Cruel, thee quite overthrown. Oh, love, oh, life, not life, but love in death. So, cruel, cruel death took her. Life is over now that my love is dead. So Paris seems to be really, really upset here. And uh, Capulet says, despised, distressed, hated, martyred, killed. Uncomfortable time. Why camest thou now to murder, murder our solemnity? O oh, child, O oh, child, my soul, and not my child. Dead art thou, alack, my child is dead. And with my child, my joys are buried. So he's saying, hated, distressed, sacrificed, killed. Why did this happen now at this time that you ruined this wedding day? Oh, child, you are dead. Juliet is dead. And with her, my happiness is buried. Now, Friar Lawrence tries to turn the thing around. He says, peace, ho, for shame. Confusion's cure lives not in these confusions. Heaven and yourself had part in this fair maid. Now heaven hath all. And all the better it is for the maid. Your part in her you could not keep from death. So basically, you know, be quiet. The cure for confusion is not more um, confusing shouting. Heaven gave Juliet to you, and now heaven's taken her back. And that's better for Juliet because she's in heaven now. You couldn't stop her from one day dying, he says. He's trying to sort of, you know, make it not sound too bad. But heaven keeps his part in eternal life. The most you sought was her promotion, for twas your heaven she should be advanced. And weep ye now, seeing she is advanced above the clouds as high as heaven itself, Oh, is this love? You love your child so ill that you run mad seeing that she is well. So he's basically saying, look, you wanted, all you wanted for Juliet was for her to advance in life. That's why you wanted her to get married, to advance her life. And how more advanced can you be if you're as high as heaven? So you're not doing Juliet any favours, crying. She's not well married that lives married long, but she's best married that dies married young. Dry up your tears and stick your rosemary on this fair course as... The custom is, in all her best array, bear her to church, for though fond nature bids us and lament, and we'll come to the next bit in a second. So this is a bizarre bit. He's saying, look, when people are married, it soon goes bad, so it's best to die young. Dry your eyes, put some rosemary, and we talked about Romeo and rosemary, didn't the nurse did earlier in this video series. It's a, a sign of death. Put it on the corpse. And as is the custom here, dress her up, take her to the church. And he says, although it's normal to cry, Yet nature's tears are reason's merriment. You know, we should be happy for her. Capulet says, All things that we ordained festival turn from their office to black funeral. So everything that we planned that would be part of this wedding can now be used for the funeral. Our instruments to melancholy bells, our wedding cheer to a sad burial feast, our solemn hymns to sullen dirges change, our bridal flowers serve for a buried course, and all things change them to the contrary. So in other words, all of our instruments can now play sad songs. The wedding food can be funeral food. Um, our wedding flowers can be used to cover the dead body. And basically everything be used for the opposite of what it was planned. Friar Lawrence says, Sir, go you in, and Madame, go with him. And go, Sir Paris, everyone prepare to follow this fair course unto her grave. The heavens do lower upon you for some ill. Move them no more by crossing their high will. In other words, look, come on, let, let's get Julia off to her grave. Some, for some reason, the, um, the gods are, are against you. Let's not make them even more annoyed by, you know, taking longer over this. And then we're just left with the musicians in a, a bizarre um, comedy scene, maybe to lighten the mood. The first musician says, Faith, we may put up our pipes and be gone. So, well, you know, we may as well go. And the nurse says, Honest good fellows, I'll put up, put up. For, we, for well you know, this is a pitiful case. So, you know, don't play any songs. This is a sad time. 
So the first musician says, I buy my troth, the case may be amended. So yeah, things could be better, that's, that's true. But then Peter comes along and says, musicians, well musicians, play the song Heart's Ease. Oh, and you will have me live, play Heart's Ease. So he really wants them to play a certain song. He's contradicting the advice of the nurse here, which is why this is humorous. They've just been told to go away. Now he's saying, play music. And the first musician asks, why Heart's Ease? You know, why do you want me to play that song? And Peter says, oh, musicians, because my heart itself plays, my heart is full of woe. Oh, play me some merry dumps. So he's saying, I've got this sad song in my heart. You know, play a happier song to comfort me. And the first musician doesn't want to. He says, not a dump, we, it is no time to play now. So he's saying, no, it's not the right time to play a song now, a happy song. And uh, Peter says, you will not then. So you're saying you're not going to do it. First musician says, no, I'm not going to do it. Peter says, well, then I'll give it to you soundly. I'll give it to you. And the first musician says, what will you give us? And Peter says, no money on my faith, but the gleek, I will give you the minstrel. So he's saying, I'm not going to give you any money, but I'm going to play a trick on you. I'll call you a minstrel. And then the first musician says, I will give you the serving creature. Peter says, then I will lay the serving creature's dagger on your pate. I will carry no crotchets. I'll re you. I'll fire you, do you note me? So just a bit of word playing banter here. I'll hit you on the head with a dagger and I'll make you sing. Do you hear me? And the first musician says, and you and you re us and fire us, you note us. So if you make us sing, you will hear us. So it's all kind of double meaning words to do with singing, but also fighting. The second musician says, pray you put up your dagger and put out your wits. So put away your sword and stop with the banter. Peter says, then how about you with my wit? I will dry beat you with an iron wit and put up my iron dagger. Answer me like men. When griping grief the heart doth wound and doleful dumps the mind oppressed, the music with her silver sound. Why silver sound? Why music with her silver sound? What say you, Simon Catling? So he says, well, I'll tell you what, then I'll attack you not with my sword, but with my banter and with my jokes. And he says, answer me this riddle. And he sings a line from a song. When sadness takes over your heart and makes your mind depressed, the music with a silver sound. And then he says to them, he asks them a, a riddle. Why is it silver sound? Why music with a silver sound? What do you say, Simon Catling? And the musician says, marry, sir, because silver have a sweet sound. So, well, because silver sounds sweet. And Peter says, pretty. So that's stupid. What say you, Hugh Rebeck? So he asks another musician. And that musician says, I say silver sound because musicians sound for silver. So, well, it's called that because we make music for silver to be paid. Peter says, pretty too, so stupid too. What say you, James Soundpost? He asks the third musician who says, Faith, I know not what to say. I don't know the answer. And Peter says, oh, I cry you mercy. You are the singer. I will say for you, it is a music with a silver sound because musicians have no gold for sounding. Their music with a silver sound with speedy help doth then redress. So basically he's saying, look, I'm sorry, I forgot you're the singer. Well, I'll tell you then. We call it music with a silver sound because musicians don't have any gold. because They're poor. And then he sings the song once more and leaves. And the first musician says, what a pestilent knave is this saying? So what an annoying man this guy is. And the second musician says, hang him, Jack, come, we'll in here, tarry for the mourners and stay dinner. So in other words, don't worry about it, forget him, Jack. We'll hang about in here and uh, we'll have dinner with these guys. So they're not at all bothered about the death of Juliet, they're just going to have something to eat. Well, in this scene, Juliet's supposedly dead body is found. And it's really interesting to see how the different characters react to this, having been so mean and controlling and disowning of Juliet previously, Let's see how they respond to finding the dead body of their daughter. First, Lady Capulet says that Juliet was her one thing to rejoice and solace in. She follows this up by telling Juliet to wake up or I will die with thee. Now this is the first time in the whole play that Lady Capulet has seemed to care for Juliet. Up until this point, Lady Capulet has seemed very distant with her daughter perhaps most notable in Act 1, Scene 3, where she asks the nurse to give leave a while so that she can speak to Juliet in private. Right away, Lady Capulet realises this is too intimate and calls the nurse back again. In Act 3, Scene 5, when Juliet appears to her for help in delaying the wedding to Paris, her mother coldly tells her, Talk not to me, I have done with thee. 
It's therefore quite shocking to the audience to see Lady Capulet seem so caring now, but unfortunately her comments come too late at this point. This moment is a reminder not to take our loved ones for granted. There is another way of interpreting the quotations on the screen though. As their only child, perhaps Lady Capulet is saying, you are my only life, look up and revive or I will die with thee, meaning you're my only heir, you're the only person who will carry me forward through bearing more children, so if you are dead, my sort of family line is dead. So perhaps she's thinking selfishly.